Hi, everybody. This is Cynthia Allen, creator of Your Bitter Back. And I'm just excited to be here today with you to talk with some people that have um, really transformed their relationship with their back. And that's what's most important is that they've transferred their relationship with their back. And thank you for introducing yourself over there in the comments and saying where you're from. It's always lovely to hear from everybody. And uh, so what is going to happen is we'll be talking with a couple of people live. I also have a couple of short videos of people who couldn't show up live, but wanted to, to talk with you. And then, um, and then if anybody wants to ask me questions afterwards, I'll be happy to take uh, questions for a few minutes as well. Uh, but this is mostly about these folks and how they have been able to make a difference in their own lives. So I want to uh, welcome to us today, um, Ruth Wade. Ruth is a gyrotonics teacher and she's um, just been a lovely person to be getting acquainted with this last year or so. And uh, Ruth, I wonder if you could just start us out with trying to maybe telling us a little bit about what your relationship with your back was like or how your back was affecting your life uh, a year and a half ago. Oh, I got to, I got to unmute you. Gosh, that would be really helpful. Wouldn't it? It's amazing how that works. Let's see how that does work. Where are you Ruth for me to unmute? There she is. Okay, here we go. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, yes, I started with, um, Cynthia and Feldenkrais movement, um, about a year, year and a half ago. And I think it's so interesting, the, the words that you used about relationship with your back. I never really thought about it that way, but it, it's uh, very true. Um, I have arthritis, it's our um, osteo. It's, um, it is hereditary in my family. I've had both of my hips replaced. And, um, and then um, I was getting some back pain and I'm trying to get ahead of it. Um, and I found out I had some arthritis in my SI joints. Um, and then when the summit came up in, um, 20, 2020, um, there was another gyrotonic, a master trainer who was presenting. And so that's how I learned about this. And I thought, okay, let, let me try. And from there took your better back, um, because I wanted to get ahead of it and, and, on, and I thought I had, um, a lot of body awareness already, but I just, one of the things I discovered was that I, I didn't have as much body awareness as I thought. So I really learned a lot about, um, what's working and what's not working, how everything's connected in every movement that I made, um, what felt good. And this idea of curiosity around when I'm in some kind of pain or having a challenge, is there another way that relationship with my body um, is there another way that it can, that I can move or ask my body to move so that I'm in more comfort? Um, that was a big, big step in learning for me. Um, and in addition, there were so many strategies um, to choose from. And, you know, and of course not everything worked and I won't say it was like a magic pill that happened overnight, but over the course of the class, because um, I, committed myself to not just taking the class, but also, you know, doing some of the, the movement lessons during the week. Of course, we live busy lives and sometimes I was able to do more and sometimes not as much, but um, in having the ability to go back to the videos of the class and redo lessons um, and and I still do, I'll say, okay, today, you know, I, my body feels this way. Ask my body, well, what do you need? Um, what do you think you need? And I can go back and I can do a process like bow and arrow or hoops or, you know, all the things that you would be learning through this process. And even just slowing down and laying, doing a scan on the floor sometimes is all it takes now to, for my body to reorganize and say, okay, I feel a lot better. I'm a lot straighter. I'm more aligned. Um, and so I can, you know, move with more freedom. Um, so I would, I really, you know, can't say enough about the class It, the better back class really helped me. Um, I still have my days where I'm stiff 
overdo things and there's some, you know, have some challenges, but I also, um, you know, can do much, much more than I was doing before, much more comfortably. And then when I'm uncomfortable, um, I can usually find a way to lessen the discomfort um, if I take that time to, gosh, even in my imagination, right? Like we do, we talk a lot about, a lot about so, you know, there's, I give, I give myself no excuses, um, you know, oh, I don't have time to do a 45 minute lesson today. Okay, well, can I just think about something for five minutes? And even in my imagination, if I'm driving in the car or something like that, and I always feel better, I always feel better. So um, that's nice. Thank that's you nice for I the mean, opportunity to share that, Cynthia. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're like one of those change. people who really tends to dig into stuff, unless at least that's what it appears to me like. Yeah. And, um, and when you commit yourself to the process of learning and, and to being in charge of your own life, um, and you get some good tools to go with it, it can make such a big difference. Right. Do you, th do you, um, tell me what you've reclaimed in your life. It feels like you've actually been able to do again, or maybe do more of, or just enjoy more. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you for one thing, my golf game, I mean, I'm, I'm still not a good golfer <laughs> and you know, I don't even keep score or anything like that, but, um, I had so much more pleasurable. Um, I can move spiral so much more freely and with so much less discomfort and um you know and i and i like have little mantras to myself and like just enjoy this movement just enjoy this spiraling movement as you go to you know hit the ball so that's one and um uh i'm an avid cyclist as well so i'm more comfortable on the bike um you know afterwards especially i can do a long ride and feel maybe do a little bit of a Feldenkrais lesson afterwards instead of stretching. And it seems to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm walking and my walking is much more comfortable, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know you use the word Feldenkrais. I just want to, and that's fine that that's what you think of a, it all as, but in your better back, there's actually multiple modalities being combined along with some of my own uh, work. Right. Um, so for, uh, so you know, you mentioned the 45 minute lessons and there are long lessons. There are also some short ones. And hopefully this next year will have this next round. I think I've got an, an even nicer way of organizing things, but did you, do you find the material pretty easy to use? The, is it, is it a, is it a challenge to use the material or is it fairly, fairly accessible to you? Uh, very accessible. i I think we created a little index that said what lessons there were for each week. So that was really helpful to find a lesson. And I think, yeah, the, the work that you're doing now with the chapters is going to be um, mm -hmm. even easier because sometimes I would want to go back to a lesson and, you know, have to remember which week it was. Mm -hmm. um, and also then once you're in the lesson, I, I, I just wanted to do the movement part, mm -hmm. you know, just so to find that 38 minutes in or what it, whatever it was, you know, but I, it, I've worked around it and figured out how to do it. And uh, yeah, so. yeah. This year will, there will not only be the chapters. So like within any video, you can like, can skip to a particular uh, piece, but also there'll be a, a search function uh, through all, for all the live sessions. And then there's all the pre-recorded material that people can access as well. And those tend to be the shorter pieces, actually the pre-recorded ones. Right. And I found like, um, there's the series that, that came with the class. There were some things that were, yeah, some like the squatting series, um, that just came with the class was really helpful. I enjoyed that. And some of the other pieces. So it, yeah, I never really had too much trouble finding what I was looking for. And it was, it was great to have that whenever, you know, the flexibility of whenever I needed it. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, um, think about, uh, the psychological aspects of, of back pain or back recovery, does anything in particular occur to you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I can say that I have had some emotional attachments to my pain based on, um, you know, relationship between some family members and myself who've had arthritis, you know, kind of deep stuff, but, um, I think for me, um, yeah, it made me, of course, not being in pain made me feel emotionally better, but I don't know about emotional 
wellness connection directly. Okay. Okay. That's good. Well, what kind of little ending piece of connection hope would you like to inspiration would you like to send people out with? Um, well, I'm always a proponent of um, find, you know, do the things, find the movement that, that brings you joy. And if you do, then you'll do it. Um, and that's like the biggest piece of the research, you know, for how, for people to exercise long-term. And I know we don't always consider this to be exercise per se, but it's in that falls into that. So, um, you know, find the things, you know, that, that you can fall in love with and, and not every lesson, you know, and stay with it. If not every lesson is going to, you know, you'll fall in love with, but um, but you will, I mean, I did fall in love with many, many lessons and, um, you know, so that you really can enjoy what you're doing and, and just, you know, find the joy in it, um, mm -hmm. so that you'll keep at it and get deep with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ruth, so much for, uh, joining us. I, I appreciate that ending, fall in love, enjoy it, find, find the things that resonate with you and, I also appreciate your honesty. I think it is important for people to not get attached to never having pain again. Uh, and I think you're, you know, you're giving us some hints here that it isn't that uh, everything is always rosy, but that you are able to enjoy your life more, reclaim more, more of the things that you love outside of the class um, back for yourself. Oh, thank you for asking me. It was a pleasure to, to be here. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great time with the rest of your day with your friends up and wherever you're I know. At. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if there are questions for me, I, you know, you can get them to me and I will be happy to answer them, but yeah, I, I am up, 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 we call it up North in Michigan. I'm right here in Michigan <laughs> with some friends. So I'm going to continue on with that. And, um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Well, that was Ruth. What a, uh, I've had so much fun um, getting to know Ruth. So we do have Patricia Lloyd here with us today. And I'll, what I'll do is on the replay, I'll uh, add in these other people uh, that I'll figure out a way to make that sound work in, on the replays. And um, then you can listen to them there. And, and uh, I have Patricia Lloyd here. So let me find Patricia and pull her forward. Okay, Patricia. And here we are. Do you hear me? I uh, guess. Give me just a second here to add you to the okay. spotlight with everybody. Great. Hi, Patricia. Good morning, Cynthia. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Thank you. So Patricia is a yoga teacher. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, a little bit like Ruth, she knows a little something about helping people to be comfortable. And yet she's had some of her own challenges. None of us get away without having our own challenges, no matter what fields we're in, these things happen. So Patricia, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your life uh, before, before you're better back, before you jumped on board to see what could happen. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share, uh, this experience of pain and suffering that as humans, we will all find at some point in our lives. Um, I was 60 when I began my yoga training, I had just lost my parents and, uh, I witnessed that, you know, how uh, the deterioration comes in life and when you don't have any movement. And uh, I kind of decided I was going to dedicate my life in the memory of my parents to learn yoga and to be able to assist and help elderly people, uh, you know, or mature people from 60s on, etc. So I trained in yoga and became a teacher, 500 hours of training, and along with this, my back began to give me trouble. It was so painful. And, but you are a teacher. You have to be out there giving hope and giving, you know, uh, spirit to many others. So um, I continued, you know, to practice and to teach. And I 
could not wait any longer. And um, so I was under medical care and my diagnosis came and it was so, it came out and it was so, so scary. Each and every bone had an anomaly. I was diagnosed with uh, a weird name that I am going to repeat here, espondylilo, espondylolithesis. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, in L4 and 5, and uh, a lot of bulging discs here and there, plus uh, osteoarthritis. So when you get all these pages with all these names and these uh, conditions and uh, you just get so scared, you say, my goodness, what am I good for anymore? It's just so devastating because you not only at this point have physical pain, but you also have mental psychological pain. Mm -hmm. So you begin to project your future with fear uh, and uh, like hopelessness. What is there for me in life? Um, I underwent several therapies, all of those that we all go to when we have back pain. I was in physical therapy. I was in um, acupuncture, uh, therapeutic massage. Uh, I mean, uh, Reiki, energy work, all kinds of things. I continued to teach and I was teaching gentle yoga, chair yoga. And uh, I signed up for a workshop uh, in Austin, by the way, this is how I remember. Uh, I signed for this workshop on restorative yoga, which at that point I figured this is, you know, where I have to just put my attention because this is all I will be able to do. So I signed up for that workshop. And while I was there, I ran into a lady who was both a yoga teacher and a Feldenkrais uh, teacher. So this is pretty much the first time I hear about Feldenkrais. So she sees my misery and I am telling her, you know, oh, you know, it's like, there is no hope. I am aging my back. Uh, but I, there was something inside me that resisted wearing those labels of a back that is distorted, that has all this and that. Something inside me kept telling me, no, 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 don't wear these because the moment you wear these, you're gonna embody all those weird names, all the pain, etc. So something I was always having, you know, in the back of my, in my pocket, in the back, a little bit of hope that something was gonna pull me out of this. So this lady introduced me to Feldenkrais and I live in San Antonio, Texas. And here there is only two people that are into Feldenkrais, only two. I connected with one and this lovely lady uh, started doing these uh, movements with me. They were called like the ATMs, <laughs> you know, like the, but it's not the money machine. <laughs> it's not the money when you go and take money out, you know, ATMs, but it's uh, awareness to movement uh, uh, exercises or movements, you know. And so uh, I began doing this with this lovely lady and um, she helped me and she said, there is a summit uh, that will be take, this is in January, 2020, when I began this process. And she, you know, I continue to attend her classes and she says, Patricia, there is going to be this summit, by, uh, you know, Feldenkrais summit in uh, May of 2020, uh, May, June. And uh, so maybe you would like to pay attention to this. You can sign up for free. So I did because I really wanted to, I was feeling better. You know, I was beginning to find that through these movements, there was something, something was happening. So I signed up for the uh, summit and I met Cynthia. Cynthia was, you know, the sunshine of this uh, 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 summit and uh, connected with the uh, people. She knows how to connect with people beautifully. I felt accepted from the very beginning. and uh, I felt that I was important, that there was caring about my pain and my suffering. So she offered this course in back, your better back. And I said, well, I'm going to give it a try. I am going to give it a try. And what do you know? I began doing these uh, classes with Cynthia. And uh, yes, I had been a yoga teacher or 
was a, or I'm a yoga teacher, but there is another level of connection. Okay, in yoga, the tendency is to work both sides of the body. And never talk about the concept of neuroplasticity that is introduced in these, uh, all these processes from Feldenkrais on. And there is immediately when you hear about these things, you say, my goodness, I, good things can happen to me. I am not so doomed, okay? My brain is capable of creating connections, recreating connections, and new things can happen to me. Um, not only I felt that, but every time that I got up from my mat after doing the, uh, these processes, I could feel a difference. I could feel that something was beginning, some, something was changing. Um, so um, I just kept doing the, 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 the classes. Um, there is this index that they give us uh, in your better back. And I began marking the ones that were really meaningful to me. And from this to date, I go back to two, sometimes three of the ones that are listed here, because those were the ones that pulled me out of my misery. And uh, physical pain and also psychological pain, because we go through psychological pain. Um, we are aging and there is a lot of fear about that. You know, we just buried our parents and uh, we, we don't want to resemble them. We want to be able to stand on our two feet until the very last moment. And we can do that. So um, I tell you, um, I sign up again for um, taking the course over and over again because it's something that I can use in my practice of yoga as well. Um, Felden, you know, these, uh, not just Feldenkrais, but this course, Your Better Back with Cynthia has given me a tremendous awareness of my body. When something is hurting and I am just sitting down, I know I can connect with the side that where I am pressing more than the other and correct. And then the one that is hurting, I begin to kind of feel it and put some pressure on it. My goodness, what do you know? Things change. So all I can tell you in this prospect of taking this course, uh, you will gain from your pain. You will become winners because this course is transforming. It's That's total wonderful, Patricia. You, I think what you're really uh, pointed to is just a lot of, you've got a lot of self-empowerment. Like yes. I'm, I'm in charge here more than I ever knew. And not that it again, not unlike like Ruth, you're not saying everything is perfect, but that you are you're able to garner the skill set that you need, and you're also your reference list of like what for you is kind of your go-to things that oh that you can count on to make a big difference for you. Um, I mean that's that's big, and that's one of the things that's talked about in the field of uh, physical therapy. They want to return people to the locus of control that they that they become the center again of their care. And I think that this is something that uh, we can excel at in these somatic approaches because we give we give people not just the exercises to do. We get we give them. A, a means of accessing that neuroplasticity to change the habits that are go with the continual production of pain that, and, uh, and those are both psychological habits and physical movement habits as well. Yes. So there is hope and uh, there is transformation. Yeah. There is transformation and it hurts less because we learn how to, con how to move the body uh, the things that you do become more enjoyable. I walk much better because something else that you learn in the process is to incorporate other areas of your body that are stiff. So you learn, you know, how to engage also your thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. which is something that we don't do. We just concentrate on the low back and all the pain is there. And we don't realize that when we engage our thoracic spine and our, you know, the upper back, things change mm -hmm. because there is, a, there is that division or that, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have the words, you know, but uh, that cooperation of the rest of the body. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's remarkable. Yeah. And I know you really also enjoyed the guest speaker, which was Larry Wells. We had guests, he, he oh. comes in guest speaks in the program and, and he brings in these elements of NLP and brain science. And uh, also even some sounder sleep work as and well. Sleep mm -hmm. And sleep, which is fabulous, you know, through Larry's, uh, I took the Larry, uh, Larry's uh, course on sleep, by the way, because, you know, this is another thing with pain. Pain also affects our sleep. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, you know, your quality of life could become, you know, there is depression and uh, all, all these things are real, mm -hmm. yeah, but the help is good. also real and the help is real because it empowers us. To, it's, it's nothing that, you know, before in the previous model of uh, help that I had was somebody giving to me you know, uh, the anesthesiologist giving the ESIs, the epidural steroid injections, somebody else giving me a pill. And uh, this is something so major for all of us to understand that through this course, you're better back and uh, everything else, all the other resources that come along empower us. So the pill you give yourself yourself your mental pill your energy your booster you give yourself because you know that by doing what you are learning your body feels better there is an opening of your brain so you think better so you start loving yourself and you start stopping postponing yourself you become first you take care of your pain and then you can be open for everybody else but you begin by paying attention to yourself. That's beautiful. Thank you so, so much, Patricia. Thank you so much, uh, Cynthia. This is a beautiful opportunity. Yeah, and it sounds you know, like, are you going to sign up and do it again with me this of year? Of course I am. Yeah, of yeah. Course. So yes. you, that's one of the things in your better back is that when you sign up, you get to repeat it in, uh, in years after if you would like. And of course, it'll keep changing some not only because of the groups, but also because of um, our bill, my ability to keep upgrading my understanding. So uh, you can, you can do that at no charge when you sign up for the Your Better Back program in subsequent years. So great. Thank you, Cynthia, so much. Thank you, Patricia. Thank and if anybody you. has any questions for Patricia or I, you could raise your virtual hand. We'll hang out for a couple of minutes. You may not. And uh, what I'll be doing in, uh, uh, so Narosha says, thank you. Lo love listening to you, Patricia. Thank you for sharing. Oh, That's gosh. very sweet, isn't it? <laughs> and um, I will be introducing uh, in, the, in the replay, I will be for sure be introducing Sharon O'Connor who had a really, has a really powerful story. And we're gonna go to Jane and uh, see what Jane has to say. And of course, if you don't wanna be on camera and be seen by, thousands of people, please do turn your camera off. So I'm going to ask to unmute, uh, unmute, and I'm going to just change my little, I'm going to add you, Jane, to our little conversation here. Hi, Hi Jane. Hi. Well, I'm definitely in, in back jail. Um, in back jail. I mean, I always had an issue, but I always uh, remained active because I knew I had to, but now I'm really suffering and I've been to so many doctors and um you know i thought i would even head towards their um surgery if i need to of course that's not in my mentality um so that's why i'm here and i'm doing that year subscription mm -hmm. so i understand that this program is totally different than the year subscription there's nothing in the library that correlates or no there is some overlaps there is some overlaps between what's in the library it's just the uh there, there's definitely some things that are not in there and then there the construction of the program is quite different uh so that it's a, a laser focus on it's a laser focus on what it takes to to come out of back pain and and reclaim your life integrate your back so 
uh, and there are also, uh, Jane, for people who are in the year long, the year learning body, there's going to be a, a, a discount for you. So, um, so if you just keep watching how it will unfold for you, I would say sign up with confidence that it's going to be different enough to be worth it for sure. Okay. And so the discount will be automatic. They'll know that I'm in the subscription. I'll take care of it at, and behind the scenes after the fact. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You can write me, you can write, we can talk about, it's very different from person to person because you all have different payment arrangements. So I just don't want to answer something specific uh, here about that. So yeah, write me a note if you want to talk more about that. Okay. Okay. Thanks Jane for asking the question. Yeah. And let me see here. Let me get allow Jane to go into the background again. Bye Jane. We're going to get you out of back jail. That's our goal is to get so. you out of back jail. I hope so. Yeah. This is like, I've done everything, you know, I've over the years, many years, I've tried to modify everything, kept active and just yeah. to be in this situation is really devastating for me now. Yeah. Well, you know, I think Patricia and also Merda, Merda talk a lot about that feeling of being, you know, constrained and in prison so and then feeling the freedom from it so yes yeah, and I've tried everything through many many years I mean my whole life basically and then to be stuck in this situation it's like I feel like I failed because you know I always you know was conscious of my problems and modified and you know went to therapists and and I just could put now <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's hard to have hope again. Cause you, it feels like everything fails you or you fail it, or it gets to be so convoluted, but I think there's very real reason to have hope. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank, Thank you. you, Patricia. Also Jane, you will, we will be talking a year from now. I hope so. I yes. Hope so. You will find that you trust, trust. It will happen. Okay. okay. It will happen. Your mind overcomes okay. the physical. Physical is still there, but your it will be less because yeah. your mind, your mind will open up. This is plus neuroplasticity. And yeah, but I've been working at that too. <laughs> it is real. It is real. real. I know it's real, but. It yeah, you important. have to have a taste of it. To yes. feel, yeah, you have to have a taste of it. Thank you so okay. much, Jane. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Jane. Thank you. And we're going to have Marka. I'll find her here in a moment. Hi, Cynthia. I... I don't have my camera on anyway. So oh, okay. Go no need. <laughs> hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. Um, this was very last minute. I saw the email about 15 minutes before this went live. Um, I'm actually here with my uh, partner, Vera, um, and she has struggled with some chronic stuff, um, in particular in her neck. Um, and so I'm wondering if, um, you know, I assume that that would be part of this program. Um, and then I'm, I was also made curious by Jane's um, comment that, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe there's a different program that would make more sense for her because she's really learning to um, feel her, uh, feel her body and understand her body um, kind of for the first time in a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I went through that experience with in person classes with you many years ago in Cincinnati. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that there may be a variety of things that are useful for her in this phase, but she's she's also doing some chiropractic work for the first time. And it seems like it it could be well aligned to do this program or maybe something else. Yeah, I know. I think it's a pretty solid program. I, I do. I do tend to focus in my languaging in the program a bit more on the lower back, but it's a pretty solid program for neck challenges. And again, she could send me an email that puts into her own words a little bit more like what they found. And then I'm going to be doing another live where I'm just going to answer like more detailed kinds of questions like that. Um, so I can, um, 
you know, maybe be more specific about whether or not it's a really great match for her or not. Uh, and that would be to email me at support at futurelifenow.com. But I think it's a solid program for uh, neck health. I mean, the, the challenge when people get into chronic pain situations um, that sometimes just a basic Feldenkrais approach is just not quite enough. There needs to be more, um, more, a little more modalities in there, a little bit more um, understanding about how pain itself changes the brain and what we need to work with around that. Um, and, and just, again, more laser focused on the actual issues uh, than the sort of circuitous route of the Feldenkrais work. And if, for me, the Feldenkrais work was, it was huge, it's potent. It's the way that I uh, have dedicated my life, but I did not find it alone to be enough for back pain. And that has been my experience with many of my clients that there needs to be a little bit more of a multi-modality situation. So I hope that's helpful, Marka. It's, and I guess you're not back in Cincinnati anymore. So anyway, thanks, bye-bye. Uh, Susan, I'm gonna ask you, unmute you and then I'll grab you, Susan. Put you up here if you like. Let's see if I can find you right there. There she is. Uh, hey, Miss Susan. Hi, thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing your story and your your joy and, and providing so much hope for us. I was curious, um, and, and if this is too private, don't answer the question, but I'm on a dose of gabapentin that I only take at night because of the side effect of dizziness that I don't like. And I've attempted to wean down and the certified nurse specialist I work with is really joyful that I would wean down and go completely off med medicine. But every time I try to go down then I have the little, what they call nerve pain, the zaps, because, you know, my back problems probably aren't as serious, but it is to, um, the bulging discs, the uh, herniated discs at, between S1, L5, L4. And I had two consultations with a neurosurgeon and he had me consult with a vascular surgeon. And the ultimate decision was I should avoid back surgery because my previous abdominal surgeries for a colon rupture had put so much scar tissue um, in there that it would be risky for me to have back surgery. And I could, you know, the outcome for me, the likelihood of it working was not as good as the average patient who did, hadn't been through all that. So I was actually quite relieved. And then I've been in your learning body and I found tremendous shifts in how it's not just back pain in my case. At first, it was all about the numbness and the fact that my left foot didn't work. I mean, they kept telling me it's weak and I'm like, no, it just, it doesn't feel weak. It's not tired. The leg just doesn't work the way it used to. And so I walk very slow and I have a very minor foot drop in that leg. And if I attempt to walk at the pace, the average person does, then there's like a collapse in the foot and a sinking in the hips. So I think I'm a really good candidate for this work, but also I was curious about in terms of numbness and functionality and even eventually picking up the pace of walking. Um, is this the program for me? I mean, it sounds like for the lower lumbar, it definitely is. But And, and then the, obviously the second question, which I kind of threw there in there at the beginning, was are, are people finding they can go off medication, wean down, and eliminate a medication like that from their life? Has anyone reported that? I know you can't guarantee that, of course. Right. No, I can't guarantee any of it. Those are really great questions. I don't know if you were ever on anything, Patricia, or not, uh, but I have had other clients that were on gabapentin uh, and other medications that are quite addicting, frankly. Um, even gabapentin, it, it, it is its own kind of addictive process that people can really struggle getting off of. Uh, and yes, I have had people lower their medications and I've had people come off of them completely. Certainly not everybody, um, but I have had that happen. Um, 
also, uh, it's always difficult to know with that numbness and the drop foot, how, like how much nerve damage has there been that may not be recoverable. Uh, but I have also seen improvements in those things at times as well. For sure, I believe you can learn to have better balance and probably be able to get some improvement in your gait speed. Um, but, but again, I, it, it would be, and I know you already know this, Susan, cause I've been, you know, we've been getting to know each other now for the last few months that, um, that there is no, you know, when surgeons tell you that there's, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to come out of the surgery this way. It's just not true. We don't know how people are going to come out of a surgery. And I'm thankful that you had us, you know, you had one of the many hundreds of thousands of ethical surg surgeons that said, this is not for you um, because there are some that are not so ethical or clear about it. And of course they give everybody else a bad rap, but um, yeah, you know, I think it's a great program for you, Susan. Thank you. I also know, you know, you've had some such, such significant shifts already in some of the work so that some of the related work in Feldenkrais and then, uh, but what you haven't been getting in, in the lessons that we've been doing is really experiencing this quality of how am I going to learn to use my abdominals differently and, and re-engage those in a way that, that probably are very offline for you. And then the, and that, that's a, a bit of a, that's a bit, some, take some bit of some trickery, right? And you ex probably experienced already just a little bit of that trickery in that narrowing of the domes. I don't know if Patricia remembers like the first time she experienced that, but I remember her talking about her response and I bet you felt a little bit of something changed for you too, Susan, in that one, did you, that came in the three-part series? Yes. Yes. And, and even from other things in your learning body and gait. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen shifts at the end of a lesson um, that are remarkable. And I, and I also am becoming more and more aware over this last, actually since the summit of 2020 that Patricia went to, um, that sense of one side's heavier than the other, like maybe there's more scar tissue over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I, I just, I, I think you're, you're also just a great candidate because of your learning capacity, your learning willingness, um, and where you're adding your, your journey of, uh, claiming that for yourself. So Patricia, do you want to add anything? I can't remember if, if you know where you were at, I know you tried steroid injections. Did you have any? Yes. And, um, uh, I guess, uh, what, really revolves around my mind is that nobody can operate on pain. There is no surgery for pain. Mm -hmm. um, so avoid surgery, uh, unless it is absolutely because there is something, you know, life-threatening, honestly. Uh, there, is, there are no guarantees and mm -hmm. surgeons do not operate on pain, you know? And, and and my neurosurgeon even said in the process of recovery, you'll have far more pain than you have now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That was um, nice. And that I was had the, honest. Yeah. Oh, he was wonderful. I, I did a lot of um, research on online as best I could. You know, some people don't post as much about themselves. Um, and I've had two steroid injections in my back. Well, they were more focused on my hip um, to go down my leg. And it felt like, for two or three weeks, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. And then it wears off, you know? So it, it's not, it's not repairing. It's not re it's not retraining the nervous system. It's just numbing the nervous system. It's just numbing the system. So it's not a, yeah. I, I mean, I know from the last year that this kind of work is about educating our nervous system, re-educating our body, increasing our, it's so different than. Yeah. And it's in a way. I, I, <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, it is not everything, you know, sometimes we need medication. Sometimes we do need surgeries for sure. And, uh, and sometimes we need physical therapy and sometimes, so it's not everything. Um, but uh, for people who have already feel that they have, uh, looked at the traditional options and 
they are not giving them what they need, I think this is an incredibly valuable uh, program, incredibly valuable program. Okay, well, thanks so much, Susan, for asking your question and that it will help other people to hear too. And for, I'm gonna let you, let you go here. It looks like that might be it for the questions. And I'm gonna show you a, a video uh, from experts of an interview that, uh, not interview, excerpts of the discussion that I had with Murdad Rizavi. And Murdad Rizavi was in last year's Your Better Back program as well as with Ruth. And um, he's a physician who is a neurologist and specialist in sleep. And uh, so he has a unique perspective, I think, both as an extraordinarily busy person, uh, and, but also as a physician. And I think you'll hear some aspects of both of that. And there's going to be something really key that he says there in the middle of his experience uh, where he's owning something that I'd like to see if you can catch, and you might want to like uh, catch that in the catch that in the comments. The experience is that you know I'm 53 and I'm pretty healthy, but this uh, you know, and I had um, sciatica for the past five years. Once a year, I, I have three days I'm bedridden and I get better, but. The last one a year ago didn't go away, so I, I've just been chronic for a year. I mean. It got better, of course, I can walk and everything, but it didn't go to zero. So from, you know, it was 10 out of 10 for three days and then usually goes to zero. But this time it stayed at three, two, three, constant. I felt also different because I reached for, for, um, for a towel. That's how started this one started. And I felt like my thoracic spine kind of almost, I, th I thought it would broke in half. <laughs> I mean, I really felt something. It's almost like pulling a muscle that I felt completely dislocated. I don't know what I did or what happened, you know. I haven't got an MRI of my spine recently, so I don't even know what's going on, but, uh, but at any rate. So it was chronic, it was uh, not um, uh, too painful, but annoying because it just gets your attention, you know, it's all the tension. And, and I wanna do martial arts, I wanna do a lot of things. It just didn't let me you know, think even about it because it just kept me like a prisoner. I was imprisoned by it. And I did know, and I've seen a bunch of, you know, as you know, and I can go through that physical therapy, Feldenkrais, craniosacral, Alexander. I mean, I did everything, acupuncture, uh, osteopath, I mean, you name it. I've seen all kinds of different people. And my Feldenkrais practitioner here helped me most. And I think acupuncture helped a little bit and osteopath helped me, but nothing, you know, it, it went from three to two or one. It didn't go away. I don't think ever. And Rolfing, I did a Rolfing too, 10 sessions, you know. But at any rate, um, but when I did your sessions, it went away. <laughs> so my, what? <laughs> For a day, it didn't last because you know I didn't do all the exercise and all that. But but at least at least I felt that there is hope that this can be a state that I can achieve because I almost became hopeless that this is something I have to live with. Didn't like it. And I blame myself because my wife tells me you're sitting all you're working too much and you know sitting for 10 years every day, you know, that's just not that's just doomed to happen. So um, and I do get up and walk, but I don't do regular workout, which I you know, I, now I over the last three months, I guess I've been doing more. Well, last year I, I walked a puppy uh, every day, but I don't do like I don't do gym or weight or regular things, you know. At any rate, so that's, uh, I was planning actually to do that uh, to prevent this from happening, but it never went away. So I just kind of became a vicious cycle. I wanted to get free better to do something, but I couldn't because it just stayed and just on and on and on. So, um, so that's how I felt that, that the exercises, and there were several of them out of, I don't know how many sessions I've done, 10, eight, three or four really were magic. And three or four helped a little bit, not much, but helped a little bit. Still was good. I felt opener and things like that. But three, two or three were magic. It was just pain-free for a day. I was. That's unbelievable. That I told you, I think, I could sit for two, two hours without anything because that's my plan. I do a lot of advanced meditation. I really want to take my health, not health, but my uh, energy level to the next level. And the spine is the key, you know. And, of course, I have to deal with this. <laughs> it's also... So I felt uh, better that I could sit for two hours because I like to do that at some, you know, soon. Well, 
so it, it, it was it was holding me for two hands. Now one hand is decapitated out. There's one hand still, so it's looser. And I want to get get rid of it, so I can. I, my plan was to do actually. I used to do martial art to go back to martial art, which I love to do, but I can't do it with this situation. You know, I want to hurt myself. So, uh, so but I need to do that so I feel fine and I can move and I don't have to pay attention to it. So I can. But I think even not just that, but doing your course, it just opened up that not only, see, we are, we are very reactive generally. We're not very proactive. So uh, we just sit, back pain is just one of it, but my posture, there's a lot more I can do, as you know, you know? And uh, so I'm doing a little bit Qigong on the side, you know? And I think there's, there's a lot of things one can do to see what your body responds to, to not just feel good, but feel the best. <laughs> feel good is not enough. Because the better I feel, the better I can help. It's actually indirectly, it's, it's, a, it's a selfless thing. It's, it's a wise thing to do. But we can't, we got off track, all of us, and what do you mean? You know? So uh, I feel that even if I don't have back pain, I like to do what you suggest. The way we walk, the way we sit. So I think I don't know my body well. So this is, this is one other thing that your, your course uh, taught me, to understand my body better regardless of symptom. So there's doors, there's doors that are locked and I don't even know that our doors are locked. It's just all, we just live with it. <laughs> um, traditional conventional medicine, it, to understand something, we always have to understand the history, where that person, where that thing is coming from. If you don't understand that, we never fully understand anything. Medicine came out of infection and wounds and wars. You know, that's how it started, not chronic diseases. That's the history of medicine. So we are very good in treating acute life-threatening stuff. We are probably the best. We are terrible at everything else <laughs> because we use the same model of, and that penicillin versus, or, and, and fracture and things like that in everything else. And, and that doesn't work, you know, statin, what is that? That's like a band-aid. that's like a cast on lipid, you know, or, uh, or blood pressure, diabetes. This is all because of, what we do, the way we sit, the way we eat, drink, move, all of the above, uh, think, feel. Um, uh, I think, uh, so th I'm interested in alternative medicine, I'm interested in integrative medicine, functional medicine, particularly, uh, it's getting more attention, I'm very interested in that. But also I'm interested in body work generally. So, um, and prevention. I think preventative medicine, it should be a subspecialty for that, frankly. We have all this cardiology, nephrology. What about preventative medicine? It should be its own subspecialty, but we, we don't have that yet. So, uh, so as, a, as, a, as a physician, I would like to Im include, if I could, I would have you in my practice or somebody like, you know, to see all my patients. All my patients should see it's because they sleep better. I'm sure they sleep better if their, their posture is better. So, you know? so we are upside down. We're always looking from Z to A instead of looking at, and I'm putting that together. In fact, one of my mission is to, and I've already been ahead of some folks, but we have a holistic sleep clinic. You know, that's really, that's one of the vision I have. I have more, but that's one of it. Well, I think you combine different things. I think you, you it is, it is Feldenkrais and Christ plus. So you, you add more and you're very, you know, I think creative or research type. You're, you're, you're even challenging Feldenkrais, which is what we need to do. You know, so every brain is different. You can add your own spice to the to the thing. You know, and I think with your partners, um, you guys, I'm very interested. I think that's a great, that's up, that's unbelievable. I mean, I walk differently, and I said, my God, you know, so why are we not getting that? This should be, you should be on Dr. Oz, Cynthia. <laughs> and I have my connections, so we'll see. <laughs>
continued to provide relief. It, it wasn't bad, it just didn't carry me the distance. So this summer during the pandemic, I had some downtime as I was furloughed from work and I saw Cynthia's class come up in an email and I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna try this and see what I can learn. And it was great. I loved it. I learned so much about this uh, fusion of Feldenkrais and physical therapy that came together in a very structured format. The, the pacing of the lessons, the, um, the exploration of relationships in my physical body that weren't always clear when I would do a Feldenkrais lesson and had no application when I would do traditional physical therapy exercises. So um, however that happened, it was wonderful because something changed in my brain in terms of understanding how to use my physical body to support my whole self, not just my back, which is where I was really focused because that was the problem area. Um, let me just check here. I particularly enjoyed learning new ways to understand abdominals and how um, using the domes or, or the abdominals in a completely different way that was really very functional to me in uh, postures, standing, walking, even at work that I'd never really learned before because of this sort of fusion, as I'll call it, of kinesthetic awareness and um, power without actually having to strengthen repetitiously. Another key area that I learned about was the upper back. What the heck do my ribs and upper back have to do with my lower back? And it seems like it should be intellectually very obvious, but functionally that's where I was struggling was how to use my arms without uh, irritating my back. And that became very clear that, oh, maybe there's something going on in your upper back and in your ribs and how does that connect to your breathing? And so that was a really pleasant and very, I would say sort of critical piece of understanding for me in my understanding what was perpetuating my back pain. Um, There was also this use of the hips and the um, pelvis in the, the knee on the chair exercise that was, it finally clicked in my brain what these glutes are about. Like I couldn't do a bridge without bothering my back. I did not understand what the purpose of that was. And I'm a physical therapist. This is what we teach. And I had no clue functionally what that was about. And then I felt it with that knee on the chair and I'm like, oh my God, this is brilliant. This is what those glutes are meant to do. So that was pretty cool. And that has really helped me in, in well, really almost everything. When I, that's how I begin to know when I'm out of balance and when I need to get back down on the floor and do some lessons. It's like, okay, this is what you need. And this is the other cool thing that I will say about Cynthia's program was that it's, it's very, uh, Mm, usable, accessible. So if I want to change something that I notice, oh, I don't, that doesn't feel quite comfortable. I know what lessons to pull out. I know where I need to go because it made sort of sense in my brain with function and with relationships of body parts um, that makes it very user, user friendly. Um, again, I don't know how you did that. So we're going to talk about that later. Because <laughs> I want to know how to teach that. So what, um, yeah, the other thing that happened for me was sort of this more emotional connection to how I was experiencing back pain and how that really limited 
my self image about what I could or couldn't do. And um, because I became more and more cautious because none of the things I was doing was, was really helping. I became more and more cautious in what I allowed myself to do. And now when I know what I'm doing, I have much more confidence to try some of the things that I've slowly let go over, over my lifetime. And that's been a real treat to, to come back to doing some of those things. How are things going now and how am I using the program? Well, again, a, a few things. It's a very accessible program. Uh, there's a lifetime access to it, which is awesome. Um, so I can go back to it. Is it perfect? Am I perfect? Do I have no pain? No, not even. Do I go in and out of it and kind of come and go in waves and, and balance and then imbalance? And um, yes, for sure. Um, and sometimes that is just getting out of balance with my, uh, my emotional state, my, my thinking state, these beliefs I have held and how to work with even those things through the program to change that whole connection of my, my thoughts and my feelings and my kinesthetic sensation and how to move. So, um, and that's been something that I've been better able to distinguish, well, oh, where do I need to work? Is it my physical body or is it what I'm thinking about or what my emotional state is? And that was through some of the work with Larry Wells, which was fantastic and a great addition to the program. While I'm walking, I'm just enjoying everything more. So I'm, I'm walking more. I have, um, I got out the old trekking poles, which was one of the lessons that we did and even tried to do some snowshoeing, which I hadn't done in over 10 years. Um, got on my bike again and, um, when, when things are really, really clear and sort of mm, working well in my self, I, I mean, I can even lift and reach and do things. When it's not so clear and things are a little fuzzy, then I have to pull back again and go back to the drawing board. But it's great to know that I can go back to the drawing board and make some changes and know that, it, that it's gonna be okay. Um, even swimming, which I love being in the water, that has gotten easier. And when I'm at work, which oftentimes in the clinic, I would get in trouble from all the constant sitting or sitting and using my arms. And that too, I'm having a much better awareness of how that carries over then. It's, it's, it's harder for me to be more aware when I'm in my work with no breaks, working with people, focus on other people to focus on myself. And yet at the end of the day, I can check in hopefully sooner, but there isn't always time in the day to do the things I need to do. But at the end of the day, I can check in and go, oh, oh, oh you're, you, come on back. We got to do something different here to, to reset, whether it's reset my nervous system or reset, um, how I'm using my body. Patricia, I'm going to say goodbye to you too. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so, so much for well. your, your wonderful learning spirit. And I'll hope to see those of you that are ready uh, inside of your better back very shortly, very shortly. So thank you so much and good luck to everybody. Yes, absolutely. Be patient. So I think it's another quality that we learn to be patient with ourselves and do the movements. So good luck. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.